A new .NET 8 feature, the HTML renderer, allows you to render a Blazor component to string. What problem can that solve? For me, this feature will improve the experience of constructing HTML emails. I will no longer have to concatenate strings containing HTML tags. So this is how I used to do it. I specified some variables with line breaks and then for each property I formatted that and I basically built the HTML output myself by concatenating strings together and then the final output would be something like hi and then some simple formatted HTML. This was not really a great experience. So now we can use the HTML renderer to render a component, a Blazor component to string and we can even pass parameters. So that's really cool, really powerful. So I made this method render HTML, specify the dictionary with parameters. I passed down my DTO object, create contact request, which holds multiple properties, subject, body, name, email. But you could also, instead of passing down the object, you could pass down each property individually. Then we parameterize that and pass that to the HTML renderer, render component async and then the type of the actual component that you want to use and the parameters to pass to that component and the output you can uh, stringify to HTML. So let's take a look at that component. So I made contact preview, which is a Blazor component and has some simple, yeah, I added some style tags just for testing purposes and even style sheets, but it actually just contains a simple table with the parameters, contact.name, email, subject, body, coming from that create content request, and then a link pointing to my website. And you see the parameter. So to HTML string will take this entire component with the parameter values filled in and return that stringified as the result, which I can then use as the email body for uh, sending a contact request. Let's see that in action. So I made this contact button and this contact form with some dummy data name tester email test at gmail.com I was testing as the message it is about testing as the subject I am human send and then on purpose I replaced the form body with the output so we could debug that what we are actually getting and then we get those style tags, the links with the style sheets and Blazor adds some uh, random stuff in here. Then the table and you can actually see email test at gmail.com. It was about testing. I was testing and so that's the message body and then that link to go to my points to my website. If I then open my inbox and gmail and i can see what that uh, blazor component resulted in so the html so we have that simple table i increased the font size of the name and the rest is just some strong or bold text and some other text and then that link going to my website I could inspect this HTML and then we see that table, tbody, tr with the font size of 36px, the link and so on. What I don't see 
unfortunately is that style tag that I added and those link tags and the styling that I specified in there is also not applied so I was expecting some red text and some uh, other colors that I tried. So that seems to be a limitation as far as I know. You can add some styling inline so the specifically using the style attribute on the on the on the table. So that's what you can do, but you can't really. So I said the style tags, transform uppercase, unless I'm doing something wrong or I'm missing something. And I also tried with a code behind file, so the CSS, which would make the color red. And even tried with my live hosted team.css of the kisco.com website to see if that would have any effect on the email. Since I expect that a thing like this, a local reference to a CSS file might not work, but maybe one that is hosted online and accessible could work. And I actually did expect to for this style tag to work, but uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. Or I'm doing something wrong. Anyhow, that's a pretty cool feature that's going to improve my experience a lot with creating emails. Another limitation might be, uh, so this is rendering Blazor components. And this contact.sharedSPA is a Razor class library. To make that work, that kind of needs to be in a Razor class library. It cannot be in a regular class library, if I'm not mistaken. It is possible in a minimal API or MVC API, like a, an actual one. And how to register that HTML renderer is in the service registration services.adscoped.html renderer. You need to do that before you can use it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for upcoming videos. And if you're interested in this project like kisco.com, this brand website with a fully functioning blog and a live markdown editor, then you can grab your own copy on my Patreon.